Hey guys, this is Holen Chambers Biology bringing to you your yeast slash beer lab. These are all your supplies that you're going to be needing. We have five beakers that need to be labeled group one, two, three, four, and five. Each group is going to have a different amount of sugar added. Every group is going to have the same amount of yeast, so one teaspoon of yeast is going to be added to each of these beakers, so that is what is constant. We're going to be then capping the beakers with a balloon and then measuring the rate of CO2 concentration around the balloon <clears throat> with a string so we can note the circumference. And then we're going to take that circumference line it up with a ruler, and then therefore estimate how much CO2 is actually getting inside our balloons from fermentation. Please remember also that you're going to need a pencil and a paper to label all of your beakers, a nice uh, milliliter cup to measure your water, and then of course some tape to put everything on here. Don't forget, with this lab, the yeast fermentation lab, you guys need to either download and or write the answers on a separate sheet of paper. I'm going to show you guys the data. So you're going to be writing down all the data for the different groups, aka beaker 1, beaker 2, 3, 4, and 5. And make sure to make a side note that beaker 1 has no sugar. Okay, beaker 2 has one sugar. Okay, so everything is labeled right here. When you are done with the graph, or sorry, when you're done with the data table, you're then going to be constructing a graph on the opposite side from the data. And because this is honors biology, you will need to figure out on your own how to do that. And so this is going to be over time, which is your hint. So minutes to 25 minutes consecutively, and we have five different groups. So hint, hint, over time. When you're done with your graph, and this does need to be hand-drawn, please, not digital, you will then um, go ahead and answer all of the analysis questions and then turn this into Canvas when you are finished. All right, guys, so in every single cup, I put 100 milliliters of warm water. I am also finishing up adding all the sugar to each of these cups. So again, beaker one got zero sugar, beaker two got one pack of sugar, this is two packs of sugar, three packs of sugar, and four packs of sugar. Next I'm going to add one teaspoon of yeast. So I'm going to make sure that everything is even. Once I add the teaspoon of yeast to each of these, I will be capping them off, and then we're going to start our time. All right, so last balloon, we're going to go ahead and cap off beaker number five. Again, the way that I'm putting the balloons on is that they're right in the middle, the opening is. And then I want to vigorously swirl and activate the yeast inside the beakers to start breaking down the sugar. Now remember, fermentation is the process of no oxygen and using sugar to create alcohol. So by capping off the beaker, I'm allowing no oxygen in, and the yeast is going to break down our sugar into pyruvic acid, and then into ethanol alcohol, and also a little bit of CO2 and ATP. So because CO2 is a gas, we're gonna capture the gas in these balloons. Now, while we are waiting, we're going to put on our timer here on our cell phone. So here's my cell phone here. Put on my stopwatch. And we're going to wait five minutes. And then we're going to start to record how much CO2 is getting captured inside the balloons. All right. As we wait, let's go ahead and read about are yeast. Now yeast are one-celled organisms in the kingdom fungi. When oxygen is absent, these living cells carry on a type of anaerobic respiration. Remember anaerobic means no oxygen. 
called alcoholic fermentation. Yeast has an enzyme which breaks down the sugar into simple monosaccharides, such as fructose and glucose compounds. Both of these are newly formed monosaccharide sugars that can be then used as an energy source. The enzyme of alcoholic fermentation then continues to break down the glucose into pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid gets broken down into ethanol alcohol, two molecules of CO2, and two molecules of ATP. Now, today we're going to be comparing the rate of carbon dioxide, again, that's getting captured in these balloons. And we're going to notice if one teaspoon of yeast, that remains constant, if I add more sugar, are the yeast going to produce more CO2? Or if you have a certain amount of yeast inside of here, is it going to, are they limited to how many sugar they're going to be able to break down and therefore it doesn't matter how much sugar, like it's just, it can only do one teaspoon of organisms to say one teaspoon of sugar. So make your hypothesis on your lab report. Okay, so this is our write-up for today. Make sure to write down what it is that we are researching. So what is our problem? Write down your hypothesis. Remember to include why, so if and then because. And then while we're waiting, go ahead and answer some of your pre-lab questions, which deals with what is cellular respiration, what is fermentation, and then of course, um, what are you actually observing in this lab? All right, so at the five minute mark, we're gonna go around and measure the diameter of all of these balloons. So again, you're gonna be really gentle and not push the CO2 back into the jar. We're gonna wrap the string around the balloon, mark where, where it's at about, and then use that string to measure up to the centimeter side of our ruler, okay? So I'll go ahead and tell you guys what all this data is on a separate slide. So go ahead and stop the video when you get the data and write that down. All right guys, so let's go ahead and skip on forward to 15 minutes. So you can see by now that the yeast is now breaking down our sugar. It is capturing the CO2 inside the balloon. And once I pop off the balloon, if you were to smell what's inside of it, it actually smells like, like alcohol. Um, the real smell is um, almost like a sourdough bread smell. Okay, so we're gonna take our stream, we're gonna wrap this all the way around, you know, as best we can with the circumference. I'm gonna add a little bit with my fingers. Okay, and then we're gonna measure that out. We're gonna record the data. One more time, measure out all of your centimeters for every single um, beaker, and then please make sure to stop the video and record the data for the 15 minute mark. All right guys, so let's go ahead and talk about while we're waiting for a 20 minute mark, what is happening here. So let me ask you, why is the zero sugar not raising up? So this little guy has no CO2 whatsoever in his balloon. Now keep in mind, all of these beakers got one teaspoon of yeast, so dry active yeast. They also got 100 milliliters of water in all of these. But the only thing that's different from this guy is that these beakers here have sugar, but he does not. So therefore, what is he considered? What are we comparing all of these guys back to? This guy. So if you don't add sugar, that's just what yeast does with no sugar. It doesn't do anything, okay? So this is your control, all right? So group one, this is your control, okay? Now, the rest of these we're gonna compare back to we can obviously see in comparison to group one 
that depending on how much sugar you give the yeast, the yeast is just gonna keep breaking down all this sugar. The more sugar you get, the more CO2. So if I were to then ask you, I wanna make super fluffy bread, what, how much sugar do I wanna to add to my mixture? Your answer should be, well, based on our study here, if you want really fluffy bread, as in a lot of CO2 adds air bubbles into your bread, therefore makes it really fluffy, we're gonna to want to add more sugar to the recipe than less, okay? If you wanna make more of a flat bread, you're going to not add um, as much sugar, so you get less of a rise and more of a denser bread. All right guys, we are officially on the 25 minute mark. Please make sure to write down that our group one is only eight centimeters. I'm oh, sorry, this guy right here is eight centimeters. We also got at the 25 minute mark group two about 19 centimeters. Group three is 23 centimeters. Group four is 26 centimeters. And then group five grew the biggest at 29 centimeters. So from here, you're gonna take all of your data. You're going to graph it on the back. Remember, we are looking at consecutive time, hint, hint, time, 